Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to The Real with the Smiths. I am Nadine, and this is... I am the fortunate hubby, Jason. And we just like to say thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you for all our new subscribers. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow, that's right. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we just would like to say thank you so much, and thank you for all the views, and welcome to The Real with the Smiths. Today... What to, I, I'm just going to let you do this, dear. I'm going to let you do this. So what she wanted to say is today's topic, and she always hands it over to me, and today's topic is going to be well anticipated. Yes. Uh, you've been waiting. You've been clamoring. clamoring. Yes. Today we are talking about the male perspective yes. of dating in the church. Yes. And we have a friend of ours the last time we are fortunate we had a long-standing friend. This time we have a, a little newer friend in my life, but I'm definitely happy for him, and he's yes. come on today. And with no further... Well, wait, hold on before I say that. This gentleman is not answering for all males out there. I know that the females have been desiring and clamoring for this video. He's one man trying to attempt to answer yes. for this demographic. He has not been prepped with the um, questions that he's about to answer, so give him some grace in that regard. And with that said, I'm going to hand the mic over to our dear friend, Larry. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Hello, guys. It is a pleasure and an honor to be on with you both. You, you guys look so wonderful, and I'm just honored to be on Keeping It Real with the Smiths. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yes. Thank you, Larry. Um, can you give us a, some background about yourself, if you don't mind? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, as you guys have mentioned, first name is Larry. My last name is Jules. Um, I am, I guess, when when identifying myself, I think the thing that comes first to mind is that I am a Christian. Um, I love saying that. Some people get offended when I do. Oh. Praise God. That is your <laughs> saying, I, though, man. Yeah. Oh, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Christian. I just got to let you know um, that is where my identity is founded. Um, first and foremost, um, I'm one of those kids that grew up in the church. Um, I, I always loved it. I never really had a desire to go out. And, you know, just more and more as I grew up, God has just dealt with me and taught me so much. And I'm still learning so much um, beyond uh, the church aspect. I am also Haitian, so sac passe. So uh, my Haitian uh, 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 <laughs> brothers and sisters. Um, what else? Uh, I work in IT. Um, I'm also a musician. So there's like a different, like a whole smorgasbord of different things that I got my my fingers in. in. <laughs> And that's about me in a nutshell. Yes, that's a lot. And that's great. Again, welcome. And we are excited. <laughs> we are excited to have you here. So let me throw out this question to you, Larry. Um, do you think society and the culture put a lot of pressure on single men to get married? Um... Does society put a lot of pressure on single men to get married? Single men I, to get married. Um, I would say that used to be the case, but from my perspective, not answering for all males, right. I don't think that's no longer the case. I, I don't I think it's true for men and women. Um right. I think when people hear like those statistics about marriage nowadays, about like um, the divorce rates being like 50 percent or when we look at like regular media that most people consume and you hear like this person was married and they got divorced and then, you know, right. five seconds later, they're married to somebody else. Right. It's kind of like married marriage becomes like dating. And wow. I think because marriage has been like so defiled in that social space yeah. i think there are many people who have been like deterred like you know wow. what, what's the point if it's gonna end in failure what's the point if it didn't work out for my parents what's the um, point what's the point point? and i think that's kind of where we're at today which is sad 
It is sad. It is. That is very, very sad. And Larry, I have a, um, I just want to ask you, your culture specific as an Asian, Asian, my apologies, Asian culture, what would you say about that? Do you believe that they put a lot of pressure on you to get married since you're in the church? You know, you're not married as yet. What 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 advice or what would you say about that? Okay, so now you're asking a different question before it was society as <laughs> a whole. Okay. <laughs> and the answer was no. But in the Haitian culture, there is definitely still that. I don't want to call it a stigma, but there is an expectation rather. Right. Um, uh, I, I, I told my current girlfriend before we started dating, like, hey, the moment we're together, there is this imaginary time clock that right. goes off somewhere. Right. <laughs> right. That, you know, right. yeah. And the pressures, of course, is on me because I'm going to be getting those questions like, OK, right. Yeah, I've been dating. Ooh. When is it coming? You know, oh, yeah. um, oh, as yeah. as little as just yesterday, I I was just getting questions about you know when we're getting married, um, yeah. and I remember it started like as soon as like three four months, wow. and then you know my response was like oh it's only been three four months, and the response to me was so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm like three. Is my Creole no longer good? Three, four <laughs> months. Like, <laughs> but yeah, so I wow. definitely say on that side of things, there is definitely still a lot of pressure. The moment you start dating, okay, come on. Yeah. <laughs> When's the wedding? Yeah. Yeah. I think I would say it's the same for the Jamaican culture as well. Um, you know, once you start dating, um, they definitely expect marriage soon thereafter. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> no problem. Excellent. And, and I'm definitely glad we were able to get another islands insight. Yes. Uh, last time we <laughs> talked about Jamaicans, now we get to talk about Haitians and yes. see that there are those similarities. Yes, absolutely. So my first question for you, Larry, is this. Um, <laughs> can you rate with your own rating scale, however you want to answer it? How would you rate the ease of approaching a female in church or approaching a Christian woman or approaching a woman that attends church as a Christian man or as a, yeah. a man that goes to, to church? Great How question. Would you rate that? Okay, great question. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, do you want me to explain or just rate it? Yeah, you, you can... Very good. I'm glad you said that. Give me a rating of however you want to, whatever scale you want to use, and then explain to me why you would give that rating. Very good. Okay. I'm going to, because I'm going to be me, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to explain <laughs> it first, and That's then I'm going to rate it. Okay. So however you want to do it. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm a very good looking man, right? So... Because I'm a good looking man, uh, it's ne not necessarily that hard for me to approach women, right? And to put to go even further, um, this is something that I often think about. In church in general, there is a lack of male presence, like yes. real male presence. Um, <laughs> there are there are those who come to church on Easter, New Year's, and Christmas, the the, the three time of year people. Um, there are some guys who are in the church, but for the most part, women don't look at them as though, like, you know, they're like men, in a sense, like this what I'm hearing. Um, there are those who are in the church and who just fulfill that musician role, meaning that I come, I play, and then I'm out. And um, there are those who are truly desiring God. And mm -hmm. um, I, I think I would classify myself in the latter of the category. Okay. And, I, and I think, you know, Guys are, well, you find, like I said, less of a male presence in the church to begin with. Then when you start whittling, whittling down all those different categories and, you know, oh, say what you will about the ladies, but they are on fire for God. You know, go to just yeah. about any church all around the world, you will see the majority of women and they're on it. They're everywhere. They're doing all the yeah. jobs. And to a certain degree, it's because there is a lack of male presence. Some guys are just not stepping up into the roles that God has called them to be. So- right. I, I, I often say that's you know we're kind of living in a golden age to, uh, of like being like 
like yeah. you know a, a man who is on fire for god because there are women who want to be led by a godly man in their mm. relationships and their marriage and it's yeah. like they they see some male presence but the male type of male presence that they're looking for is rare and i think yeah. when you inhabit those characteristics and it's kind of like it, it, who would I ever think that we would be in a day and age that like yo you want to get some church girls focus on wow. god like what wow. yeah, no literally if you just do that and you fixate on god and you just run after him trust me there are plenty of women nowadays who are also serious about god who are sure. looking for a man like that so um <laughs> i i think because i'm a man like that right um not to say that i'm the best christian ever i mean right. but like you know because i'm seriously desiring god and i'm chasing after him and on top of that i look so good i mean what you know <laughs> it, 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 that's why i'm saying maybe on a scale of one to ten how easy it is it's like an 11 in a sense <laughs> wow excellent wow. No, wow. That's that's it's easy super I, i'd say nowadays it's easy yeah okay. Wow. Now, Go ahead. I have a follow-up, a follow-up on that. Uh, although you, you pretty much answered it, but let me let me put it directly out there in case any viewers are thinking about it. Mm -hmm. With all that you said, do you think there are any disadvantages mm -hmm. that guys in the church have in approaching a woman versus a man outside of the church? approaching a female from the church wow that's good that's good great question and i love how you worded it um because you're right there is a danger um there is a disadvantage and i you know in my long soliloquy i forgot to mention it um as I, I don't, you know, I'm guessing you guys are a little older. So we've all been around the block a little bit. We've all been in relationships before and not our relationships work. Right. right. Um, right. you know, we, we've all probably had a first love, uh, maybe a second. And sometimes who you end up with isn't that first, is it the second? You know, it's great if right. it was the first. Right. If it was the second, you know, you spent all those memories, you know, you learned those favorite colors, uh, favorite movie for nothing, because yeah. I just gotta delete that information <laughs> from my brain. Um right. and where that, you know, connects to what we're discussing is that like um when you date somebody in school, oftentimes, right? We might've had the same classes in ninth grade, but 10th grade comes and we got different classes. So it's like, not only do we have room to heal, it's like, we get to be disadvantaged from that awkwardness of like, oh, we dated and now I'm moving on with my life. Perhaps I'm talking to somebody else now. Perhaps you're talking to somebody else and I'm not over you um, at school. But in the yeah. church, oftentimes, you're not just up and leaving churches after ninth grade, after 10th grade. You're usually, uh, in a lot of instances, in the same church for the majority of your young life or adult life, rather. So because that's the majority of us, therein lies the danger. Um, you know, you and sister so-and-so are in the choir and she looks good and she, and you think she look good and she thinks you look good. And then you guys start talking, you get into a relationship and that's good. But I don't know what happened, but for some reason it didn't work out. That was ninth grade. Well, 10th right. grade, now sister so-and-so is looking at you and now you're right. no longer with sister so-and-so, but they, they're <laughs> friends because we all grew yes, up sir. in the same church, but yeah. She's like, hey, the guys are slim pickings, right? Yeah. So it, so it's like the danger is, I'd say for a guy, is that like, if you really, because at the end of the day, these, I, I call it sisters so-and-so, so, so, these are really your sisters in Christ. Right. And, right. And, and you truly do want the best for them. You want them to be happy, but you also want to be happy. Um, cool. Because you want to be happy, you don't want to be stuck in a relationship where you're not happy. Yeah. Um, so that that might mean ending something that she might not be ready to end or vice versa. She ends something that you wanted to continue. But mm. sometimes, especially when we're younger for our spiritual lives, there are certain relationships that we should not have been in. But, you know, you, you live and you learn. So but the danger is, you know, after two or three of those relationships and the same church and a lot of times it, it is in the same church because we all run in those same circles. We see each other every week, every weekend. Then it's yeah. like, oh, you know, I talked to her, I talked to her, yeah. I talked to her. And now, now you're like the, the the new one, but you already have a reputation. Right. And it isn't the right type. So I think I, I went about it a long way, but the key word that the danger is the reputation. No, you know, it's good, like good <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was a good seat me too. I like it. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, wow, that is a lot. And you know what? Um, that's something that definitely needs to be discussed in the church is like going from one sister to the next sister and from one brother to the next brother. And in a lot of that, you know, um, what what people don't realize is the hurt that caused on let me talk for the female, the hurt mm. that that caused on the female that I'm seeing the person that I was dating um, <laughs> in the church, which is my brother, dating my sister. You know, that's, that is a hurt. And too often that happens in the church. Yeah, too often that happens in the church. So I thank you for even um, open the box, actually, <laughs> to talk about that. Um, let me see. Hmm. Well, with that being said, I want to ask you, because honestly, you've been bragging and say you're a very handsome man. And I'm not looking at you because I have my husband. <laughs> yes, you have a great one at that. <laughs> And you give yourself, it's not even 10 out of 10, it's 11 out of 10. I'm just <laughs> saying, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. I like that, and I'm glad, and I'm grateful for your confidence. So with that being said, what are some of your standard as a young single man, single as in not married yet, let's say okay. that. Okay. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. that, yes. That's how we're defining. That's not married yet. Um, mm -hmm. What are some of your standard, um, you know, in the church or what is, yeah, what is it that you're looking for? Okay. So yeah, I'm guessing you're, you mean standard in terms of a young lady that I'm pursuing with the intention of marriage, correct? There you go. Okay. Um, yeah. So because of based off what we discussed in the last uh, question about reputation, yeah. you have, you have to be selective. I want to start there. You have to have a standard speaking for all, not for, but to all of my brothers who are watching and subscribing and liking and commenting. Um, <laughs> you have to have a standard um, yeah. because, you know, as I've, as I've heard it been said, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Absolutely. So um, you want to like, not just mentally, but like literally define like, hey, um, you, first, well, guys, first you have to have understanding of yourself. Yeah. You have to know yourself to know, okay, maybe this personality type doesn't quite match up with me. And because it doesn't, you know, why would I pursue a relationship with somebody who I know doesn't match up just because she looked good only for six, seven months later for what mm -hmm. I knew is exactly what happens. Now we're broken up and that's one more notch. That's one more relationship in my chain of failed relationships in the church. And, you know, we often talk about the reputation of the young lady, but there goes reputation of the young man, the young minister, yes. the young preacher, the young musician. Uh, and, you know, that that impacts you too you know we don't talk about it for the guys as much but with right. that being said um the uh, my standards are what i was looking for of course as i was desiring god is understanding that i i needed somebody that desired god just as much if if not more Wow. Um, and I think wow. that that has to be number one. It's like, yeah, it's a thing that we say, you know, yeah, you know, I, right. you know, I love God. I would, but, yeah. But like, no, you know, right. Um, right. so much so that like, um, you have to not just think about you at your best, but also at your worst. Yeah. Um, if, 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 if I decide that, you know what, um, my mom just passed away and God just killed my, my brother right after that and this and that. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm not going to have a wife like Job's wife who's mm -hmm. going to be like, Hey, just curse God and die. Right. Or I'm going to have somebody who sees that like, Hey, I am weak. Like I am in a place where God is just breaking me. Who is there? That's just encouraging me. Who is there? Just, you know, uh, dragging me along for a little bit. Cause it's, it's not her job to just pull me the rest of our lives. Right. But like it's saying like, hey, I understand that this is a weak moment, but this relationship is founded on the 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 solid rock that is Jesus. That is the yes, rock that this relationship amen. is built on. And because that is the rock, um, 
if there is no him, there is no us because he is that which binds us. So mm. even though you're feeling, you're feeling down, Hey, this is what this is founded on. So at some point in time, you got to get back up. So yeah. just, yeah. Design somebody whose eyes are truly fixed on God more than they're fixed on me because mm. I don't want to be an idol for my wife. And I don't want my wife to be an idol for me. I want to like, we're both pursuing God. And the more we pursue him, we just get closer and closer and we become uh, united in him. Um, yeah. So like, wow. Yeah, of course, that's like the main thing. I mean, good looks don't hurt. I mean, I just got to hey, put it out there. You're, you're laughing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I I, I got to wake up next to you every morning. I don't want to look and be like, oh, dear God. Right. I mean, she, you know, right. She's a prayer warrior, but oh my goodness, maybe keep the lights off a little longer. I mean, <laughs> you're not wrong. You need another 11 next to you. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely. God first, you know, uh, I think guys tend to be more visual. So, of course, the the, the looks. But I also think personalities do matter. Like yes. I was uh, stating before, you know, not, not every personality type matches up. So I, I think me, I'm a pretty easygoing guy uh, in right. that regard. So um, because of that, you know, like I think I can deal with most characteristics um, I can kind of just take it and just keep on loving. I think that's how I view myself. Yeah. Um, but I guess the last thing I would say just before I end this question was also understanding, um, uh, cause me personally, I'm very involved in my church. Right. So, um, like, you know, I'm up early, like I'm up at five on most Sunday mornings and I don't usually get out to like three, four and throughout the course of the week, there are different things that I'm often needed for. And because yeah. I have like a mixed bag of skill sets, I get different calls for different things, whether yeah. it be for preaching engagements, a playing engagement, say, hey, this tech is not working at my church, or, you know, just various different things that I get called for. But, and I think where this flows into relationships is um, somebody who understands yes. your calling. Important. Um, Important. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, like, um, uh, Jason, you're a musician, and um, if your wife didn't understand that about who you are, she might be upset. Like, why are you always going here to go play yeah, when I, I I, I want to spend time with you? Right. But you know, you you have a man who is like you know literally like playing the string instruments like David, and you don't know what type of spirits are being casted out by wow. what God is using him to do. So yeah. when you understand that anointing and that ca calling, you praise God for it. And you understand that it's not always easy because it, when somebody is in ministry, it takes a toll on your relationship. It does. In case in point, you know, there are a lot of, because there has to be a balance, right? Because there are some uh, pastors or ministers where it's too much of the ministry, not enough of the family, where, yeah. you know, the family is, is suffering. Yeah, man, that's another can of worm right there. <laughs> yeah. What's up, buddy? Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, you want buddy. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so, you know, that that's one side of it. But you don't want to have one person who understands the importance of ministry, understand the importance of calling that, hey, this can't be my whole life. But if we just hold up as a family and yeah. we're just all tightened it and we just worship and pray together, how right. about those that Jesus called us to go to? Yeah. How are they ever going to hear about them? You know, how yeah. are they ever going to be ministered to? But understand yeah. that, hey, there's a balance that sometimes my wife can't sit next to me at church because right. she's leading praise and worship or she's on the usher team. Or sometimes my husband's not next to me because he's here. You know, he's taking care of this and the church is yeah. blessed and church is growing and just being grateful for that type of person. But not everybody can handle that. Right. Not wow. every partner. Ooh. At first, it's cute. Like, oh, he a man of the church. He do this. He do that. But after, yeah. okay. That was cute when I saw you from afar. Now right. that you're mine, <laughs> you got to be right, right next to me. Right. Yeah. Another long answer. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Listen, man, we could end the interview right there. Like that. <laughs> when I yeah. said you want money? Yeah. <laughs> that right there is a lot. And man, no one really talks about that right there. Like you just said, 
so much. Um, Cause I know for us, the little backstory, that's very important. That was very important. Jason being a musician and also a minister and knowing that he has to go out and preach and play. And man, I have to be that for him and be his covering. And a lot of people don't tell you that before you get married. And not only that, I'm not going to be able to sit with him all the time and he's not going to be able to sit with me all the time. And that's another thing that they don't really tell you because, you know, you think, oh, now we're married. It's going to be, I'm always going to be next to you. We're going to sit together in church no matter what, but it's not like that. And he's going to get some calls where, I'm not going to be able to go and I'm not going to want to go and he's going to have to go without me. And as a wife, I have to understand that and understand the calling on his life and vice versa. And we have to respect that. And something we do in our marriage, um, you know, whatever his relationship is with God and what God told him to do and ask him to do, I have no say so in that, you know, as long as he's doing it. <laughs> that's it. And I'm going to make sure that he's doing it. That's the only say so. But all hands all, that's between him and God. I am just here to cover him. And thank you for sharing that. Like, wow. So... Won't say too much more. I'll say two things. Uh, one, obviously, I'm thankful for a wife, like you said, that we were able to talk about a lot of that stuff before, mm. and she didn't change after we got married. Wow. Mm. Uh, I'm a very <laughs> supportive <laughs> wife. Um, as she's saying, sometimes I get calls the day of, like, yo, we need a bass player. Yo, we need a drummer. Can you right. get here in 30 minutes, 40 minutes? Right. Hey, babe, you know, I just got a call. Is it okay if blah, blah, blah? And she'll be like, oh. Um, you know, she's very supportive of it. She knows I'm passionate about it. And she knows that's a piece of me. If she suppresses, we're going to have a problem in our relationship. Facts. Mm. So um, for those women out there that want musicians, that's an important piece. The yes. other piece Larry did not speak about is the practice time. Mm. So we oh. can be in the same house, but I need to spend some time yes. practicing too. So yes. Um, yes. even though they may be there, they're not always there. All right, so let me go on to the next thing. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say, part two. Just to clarify, Larry is a jokester. Just for the, I didn't I didn't say that in the beginning. Right. <laughs> Even though he's saying the stuff he's saying, Larry is extremely humble. I don't want anybody to, to get the wrong idea about this dude. <laughs> he's being himself, but he is a very humble person. He's not conceited. He's not a jerk for for anyone watching. I'm gonna just give him that. Give him that. Right. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna ask my 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 last question, and I'll I'll um leave my wife to ask any additional questions that she has. Uh, I want to help the ladies out. Oh, boy. I want to hit a little, a little softball over the plate, if you will. Okay. So I'm going to ask <laughs> I'm going to ask my friend Larry to, to help me give the ladies a softball, and that is this. Uh, Larry, if you could, as a male, mm. and you, may, you, you personally spoke to some of um, your own standards or things of that nature in the last right. question, but I, I, I want you to kind of try to group as a gender, even though you're not answering for all of us. What advice, what thing about males would you give females looking to date a guy in church? What, what is the one thing that you think is most important that they know about males in general in the church that may help them? I don't want to say too much for putting. Oh in wow! Around. Listen up, sisters. <laughs> okay. Um. Again, I think about this stuff sometimes. So, um, this one I, I've also thought about. Um. Again, I, I think just being a male in a church, like I said, you're usually surrounded by more women, mm -hmm. and I think oftentimes, um, because the women are around one another, it's kind of like a feedback loop of like. I think this way and my other sisters think this way. This must be how everybody thinks about it. Mm -hmm. Guys are different. It's, it sounds simple. And again, I can't speak for all guys, uh -huh. but it, it, it's, it's, it's literally the simple things like, hey, he's probably not as emotional as you. Hey, he's probably not overthinking it as much as you. Yeah. I, no, I, I know all of your friends overthought it and thought it was the same thing. And, but yeah, he's supposed to be a Christian. I thought, okay, maybe the guys in the world, but the guys in church should be different. 
no <laughs> you know Everything. there are just certain there's there's certain things that like oh uh, I like uh I, I can't remember what anybody I saw at church yesterday wore. I, I can't I can't tell you what I wore. <laughs> Yeah. But I have like, you know, some of my youth members, some of the younger girls, they'd be like, yeah, I remember uh, two months ago, you wore that shirt with that pants. It did not match. I'm like, how do you remember what I wore three months ago? Yes, and you, could, you could recall it. <laughs> and, like, and, like I, I asked other guys, do you remember what you wore yesterday? No, I don't remember what, what I what I ate this morning. So it's like, <laughs> like certain things that women focus on and think are like super important or like, you know, or a big deal to you might not be a big deal to him. And I think that's kind of like the, how I would boil it down. And I think that's the beauty of it. And to, to put it that way, we weren't intended to be the same because if everyone taught you like, thought like you and your sisters, then God would let you marry one of them. But yeah. he wants you to be with a man and he wants yeah. the man to be with a woman. And yeah. like I said, I'm not, these are general things that i'm saying not every man is this way not every woman is that way but yeah. the majority are women yeah. tend to speak more words in a day than guys do that yeah. is just a fact and mm -hmm. it's okay if he doesn't say as many words back to you as you said to him yes, he is. is different it doesn't mean that he doesn't love you less if you tell him you love him 50 times a day and he says it three times a day it don't mean that your love is 50 times more than his no uh, watch his actions watch how he treats you watch when something bad happens how he's rushing to your side guys yeah. tend to be more about demonstration versus yeah. verbalizing whereas wow. it, it, but it's also understanding both sides of it, right because us men we need to understand that hey she needs to hear it maybe i'm saying it three times she needs to hear it five times or ten times I got to meet her somewhere in the middle yes sir but yes she also she also has to understand that hey just because I'm all about the words and this and that doesn't mean that uh, if he's not l doing those exact things doesn't mean that he doesn't love me or he doesn't love me as much. He doesn't care as much. Trust me, if you watch your man every day in multiple ways, he is proving that he loves you and that you are a priority, one of the main priorities in his life. Oh, so good stuff very good stuff very very good stuff thank you <laughs> my pleasure um so i guess this would be our last question sure. right sure. okay so i asked our um guest before my girl my sister girl marlene mm -hmm. Um, this question, and it's only right for me to ask you, um, what are some of the things that you would like to see in the church for um, young single men? Um, basically like programs or like, you know, meet and greet, um, just different things that gear towards young single men to prep you for marriage. Hmm. Wow. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do a shameless plug because I, I don't, I don't think you guys even know this, but, um, God has kind of been putting that same thing, you know, on my heart as well about wow. like, um, as I mentioned before, we look around, we see a lack of the male presence in the church. Yeah it's not something that's new. It's something that we're all aware of or something that like, I guess I don't go to your church, but I just know never, I don't have to visit to know that. Yeah. There are more girls there. They're more active than guys. Right. And because it's a problem that's so prevalent and we all see it. Um, it's one of those things I was, I was like, you know what, why are we just talking about it as opposed to what you're saying, doing something about it. And, um, as Jason mentioned before, I might joke a lot, uh, but it, it's not like I feel as though I have a lot more to offer as if like, you know, I have mastered malehood. Uh, you know, I am prototypical man. Let me impart my manliness upon on all other men. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, you know, kind of like, like we're doing here, you know, any knowledge that I might have, any little right. bits of nuggets that I can offer to yes. whoever's coming up after me so yeah. they can avoid the pitfalls that I fell into so they can learn about, hey, you're a young man, but just because we talk about her reputation don't mean that you're not getting a reputation too. Right. Um, don't mean, right. you know, you're not going to have to see her in five, 10 years, you know, that's still going to be your sister. In heaven, yeah. just, just because y'all broke up don't mean she won't be there, don't mean you won't be there. That's so true. there's a certain level of respect that we have to have for one another. 
So yeah. with that being said, oh, oh what God, uh, uh, through his inspiration and wisdom, has allowed me to do as partner of other young men that I see in other churches who That's are good. in similar positions, you know, uh, young ministers, people who I see uh, have a desire and a hunger for God. And, right. you know, or who, who don't want to say that, you know, you got to learn it how I learned it, which is the hard way. But right. who wants to make life a little easier for the young men yeah. that are coming up after us? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, what? Uh, so to, to, but to more directly answer the question, what we've been doing so far, I've been kind of having like programs um, in the church that don't necessarily look like church on the surface. Mm. Nice. But why? Because we've been having church for so long. And where the guys been at? They, they haven't been showing right. up. You right. can call it whatever you want. You can put whatever label you want. You can invite whatever artist you want. The women will show up and you'll get the smattering of men in the crowd. Unless you invite them to come play music. Then they will come. They will let you. It will be good because they're great at what they do. Moment where yeah. it comes. You will be looking for them and they will be nowhere to be found. But again, it's not new. Something that happens in all of our churches. Yeah. So rather than doing the same old, same old is um, I explained it like this to somebody the other day. Jesus has called us to be fishers of men. Yes. And um, if you know anything about fishing, I'm, I've never fished a day in my life. But anybody who knows anything about fishing knows that right. uh, you use the certain bait to attract a certain type of fish. Yes, sir. Not every bait not works for every fish. There so the bait that we've been throwing so far has been Good. getting the women. Why are we using the same bait expecting to get different results? Mm -hmm. So how about we change up the bait to see if that can attract the young men, show them that, you know, church isn't just what they thought it was, but right. church can look like this. Church can be yes, community. Absolutely. Church can be fun. Um, yeah. Church doesn't have to be necessarily a service the whole time. Um, mm -hmm. Most recently, one of the events we had was a basketball tournament, a three-on-three -three tournament, wow. understanding that, hey, guys are competitive. One of the things that I mentioned that might be different between girls and guys, right? Uh, for a girl, well, some girls, I can't speak for all girls, right? But right. if me and my friend are trash talking, like, oh, that girl, she's not really my friend. But guys, it's like, oh, you're challenging me? Yeah. Like, we like that. You know, we yeah. love that middle yeah. intensity yeah. and competition. <laughs> Bridging to the choir, bro, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, but with that being said, you know, um, it, bring your church. Bring your best three. Yeah, church has been talking trash all along. Okay, let's settle it. And trust me, it got really intense. And wow. there were some young ladies there, again, who predominantly interact with guys from church and they were yeah. shocked they're like yeah. what are they? i'm like no they're not about to fight this is just it's <laughs> just this, this is, yeah like and, and but the most amazing part of it all was that like how many guys turned out it mm -hmm. was evangelism without having to evangelize Wow. Just put out the flyer and people were inviting their friends. We're inviting friends, mm -hmm. a cash prize of $300. Um, wow. So, and the feedback that I got was like, hey, people, certain young guys were telling me like, hey, I've been trying to invite my friends to church for the longest. Mm -hmm. And they, and and you get the, yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, I don't go to church, but I'm spiritual. Yeah. Keep inviting right, me. I'll come to the next right. one. They never show up. <laughs> but you say three on three basketball, cash prize. Yeah competition yes. they are there right. can't speak for all guys yeah yeah I, I can't speak for all guys but a majority of guys love basketball um mm -hmm. but to bring it back to church right because it couldn't just be basketball then i send you home it, right. it, it, it was it, the basketball was the bait right yeah. <laughs> the yeah. cash prize was the break but we That's were willing great. to put the, our money where our mouth was where we're yeah. willing to put our time and our effort and then right in the middle, we had like a halftime break, which was the word. Um, wasn't yeah. too long. I wasn't yeah. about to sit you down for an hour while you are hot and sweating. Your testosterone is pumping. Right. But I just had to let you know that, hey, the ultimate winner is Jesus. He's yes, never sir. lost the battle and he never will. Yes. Um, just had to put that message in there. And like yeah. the plan is to do more things like this that, that are kind of geared towards young men. So. So go back to the question. <laughs> what I think we should do is have more things like that. Um, and I want to challenge all young men who are watching and whatever church you're at, whatever capacity, um, stop waiting and saying, you know, one day I want to give back. I want to help those who are coming after me. Yeah. In whatever capacity you can, start 
pouring into the younger ones because ultimately it's not the programs. It's not the three-on-three basketball tournaments. It's the yeah. relationships that we right. establish. Yeah. Um, because at some point in time, it's getting to the point now it's kind of weird where like I was the young guy that would rely on my mentors and ask for, you know, yeah. questions and ask for like, what do you think about colleges? What do you think about girls? Now right. I got them coming to me and I'm like, does it mean I'm getting old? <laughs> 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 but it, it's also a blessing, right? Because now yeah. it's like, wow, I'm in a place, a place where like, I don't have all the answers, right. but I can give you what I do know. And right. the the hope is that you will stand on my soldier, soldiers, shoulders, and you will do better than, than I've done. So yeah, I, I think that's the solution. It's wow. men pouring into younger men. It's men pouring into other men, not just below, but sideways, upwards. And I think- yeah. Um, more than just the female presence, because you know a, a mom can uh, pour into her her son's life yes, to a certain degree so much, but yes. a dad's presence is necessary, right? Yes, it because is. God is, is, yes, is the ultimate is. father, and that was His design. It was never just to just be a single mother family or a single dad right. family, but right. both parents have something that they add and they they bring to that family. So I think the man's presence, you know, just pouring into each other, giving each other the game, as the kids would say, and just helping each other out. And I think as we continue to be authentic with one another and just love one another, we'll just see that change and we'll see um, the presence of the man in the church more. And as they're there, we can give them the, the goods about not just, hey, being spiritual, because that's where it starts, right? Having right. a relationship with God. But now that you've established right. that, okay, God has called you to be fruitful and multiply. What does yes, it look sir. like in pursuing a partner? What type yes. of young lady should you be looking for? Um, yes. The do's and don't. Okay, you know, what, what, how what time can you be out? Um, should you be texting her? Why are you texting her knowing good and well that you're not ready to commit to either of them? Maybe right. that's not a good idea, you know? Right. Right. And we all been there, Jason, right? He might not listen to you, right? He might say, <laughs> oh, that's good. And he might still do it, go exactly against what you said and do it anyway. But I still got to love you, right? I still got to keep on living. Because, man, if God gave up, to, gave up on me after I messed up two and three times after he told me oh. no, I, I wouldn't be there. So who am I to be like, right. you know what? I, I gave you good advice. You didn't listen. You're on your own. No. You know, it, we're all we're all each other got. So just continue to point each other and help yeah. each other. Very good. Wow. Very good. Larry, man. <laughs> Listen, I'm never speechless. <laughs> I don't think I am at this point. But, oh, man, thank you so much. You have blessed us. And I know that you have dropped a lot of jewels yeah. here today. Like your last name, bro. <laughs> That's what I was just thinking about. Exactly. <laughs> Oh my goodness, and thank you so much. I am so blessed by your knowledge, and I know that you are a young man, and man, what God has for you mm. is yet to be seen, and I'm done. Amen. Amen. I receive it. I, I concur with everything your wife said. Um, you know, what were which as I felt the passion in the last thing you were saying, and yeah, I completely yeah. wholeheartedly agree with you. Yeah. But what you were describing is discipleship. It, yeah. It's it's wow. what Jesus did with the yeah. disciples. You know, we look yes. at it as this big, deep spiritual thing, but it's basically like, all right, here's some guys, let's do some guiding things. We'll hang out with each other, we'll build relationships, yeah. and I will give you the knowledge that you need, and then you all can give it to each other as you grow. Right. Um, you know, and then he turned around and told Peter, you know, we're not trying to preach, so let me, let me be careful. <laughs> Pastor. I, I start switching hats, but he turned around and told Peter, and when you're converted, turn around and strengthen your brethren. So, like, right. when yes. you get it, turn around and tell somebody else. And it, it's yeah. the Amen. same thing you were describing, man. And and, and I, I think I've said it like seven times already. You hit the nail on the head. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, you are wise beyond your years. And um, you gave us a lot of other topics we can go with, a lot of other things that we could get into. Um, but yeah, I'm just thankful. You know, God definitely led us to you for a reason. Uh, and I think that, that you did wonderful today. And, and thank you. Now, I don't, we asked you a lot of questions. 
What I don't want to do is not give you a chance to say anything else that you might have on your heart. If there's anything um, else you wanted to share or anything else you want to put out there before we close, you know, that's, right. we want to give you that opportunity or, or uh, whatever, it's, whatever. I'll just leave it at that. I'll leave it. Go ahead. First and foremost, I just got to say thank you. Um, I loved being on with you guys. Great questions, great atmosphere. I can just sense the love between you guys. And uh, trust me, I'm praying and hoping that I have something similar. You know, when I get there, keep praying for me. I'm coming. Yes. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, I, I don't think I mentioned uh, what uh, the organization that that we've, we're working on is called. It's called My Brother's Keeper. Um yeah, not not very complicated. MBK for short. Uh, look out for us. You know, hopefully there's uh, it's, there's a lot going on, but it, we're always planning um uh to to do more and to impact more. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing I just want to say is again, thank you for having me on. Thank you for doing this. I think this is necessary. Uh, as I've seen on your other channels, I um, mean your other videos, you guys um approach this from a Christian perspective. Yes. And as I mentioned, what based off of your first question about what we see in society, it's it's uh it's a very distorted and disfigured uh version of what relationship, what love looks like, mm -hmm. rather than compared to what God intended. Okay. And I think as people like you come to the forefront and you show what God intended and you demonstrate it with what you guys are putting forth both personally and by the people that you're having on. I believe that God's going to continue to use this, that he's going to grow the, grow this platform. Yeah. And I can't wait to say that I was, you know, keeping it real with this missile way back yes. when. You were. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have, to have you on again uh, at some point. I That's think. exactly where I was going to go. Please, at any point in time, you guys have my number. I am not a stranger. Please, at any point. Like, you know, you don't understand how how much like I'm willing. If you want me to drive down, like I said, it's not a problem. I will. I will do it. Like that's how oh. how much I love this. <laughs> yes. Wow. Thank you for that. And I know for both of us, I can speak that we are grateful and thank you for offering to drive down because that will be our next. <laughs> we will definitely have you over well. Um, so to wrap this up, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. And thank you for just being a blessing to this channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our new subscribers. I hope that you will go through our video and find something that will minister to you. So hit that like button. She already said to subscribe. Leave a comment. Talk to us. He, he uh, Larry gave us some great jewels. And more than anything else, share this video. There's yeah. some male out there there's some female out there that could really benefit from this we're married and we benefited from it oh, so man. definitely uh share this video and we'll see you next time yeah take care